Okay, so today's video will be on rational producer behavior, where we will go over some terminology that would lay the foundations of studying market structures. So first, let's take a look at the word rational here, which we know means something like behaving with logic and reason. And in the context of economics, when we say rational producers, so rational firms, we primarily mean one thing, that we assume all firms will aim for profit maximization. So in economics, we're assuming that producers would be rational and act in their own best interest, trying to make as much profit for themselves as possible, which I guess is quite similar to the caricature of the greedy 1% that we sometimes see. That we know is always a hypothetical assumption, as profit maximization is not always the single greatest goal of a firm, but at least in economics, we assume that every firm aims for profit maximization. Now let's move on to some terms. It is likely that you would have seen this formula before. Profit is revenue minus cost, which is pretty straightforward. You sold five apples for $5 each. It cost you $2 to produce each apple. So your profit from selling apples is 25 take away 10, $15. Now in this section, because we will be going into the smaller parts that make up each profit, revenue, and cost, We'll just clarify this formula a bit by adding the word total in front of each, which will just mean that we're talking about the total sum of each of the smaller components that make up each profit, revenue, and cost. So, with our clarified formula here, let's first take a look at total cost and what it is made up of. When we're producing a particular good, let's say cake, there are different costs that go into making a cake. And now I want us to think of these different costs with this one standard in mind. Does the cost change as we change the quantity of cake? Yes or no? So let's think about one example of a cost. We can think about an ingredient, let's just say flour, which we can also call an input that goes into producing the output, which is the cake. Now, as we're increasing the quantity of cake, we're making more cakes. Thus, the cost of purchasing the ingredient, amount of money spent purchasing flour, increase? And the answer is yes, it does. We need more flour if we're going to make more cake. Now, let's think about another cost that goes into producing cakes. We would need the building of the bakery, right? We need somewhere to make the cake. In order to have the building, we would need to cover the cost of rent. So, would the cost of rent increase or change at all as we change the quantity of cake? In this case, it is no. We would be paying a fixed cost of rent to have the bakery building, and that doesn't change no matter whether we have 10, 20, or 30 cakes being produced. So, based on this one standard here, we can see that there are two types of cost. The first, which we call variable cost, that change with the quantity of good we are making. And we have an example of flour and also things like wage that you pay to workers would also be a variable cost to make more cakes we need more bakers and the wage you pay to your bakers would also increase so these costs that vary so variable costs change when we change the quantity of output and the costs that do not vary when we change the quantity of cakes those they stay fixed are called fixed costs like the example of rent, where the cost is the same and independent of the quantity of cake. Therefore, in terms of figuring out total cost, we just need to note that it would be the sum of all our fixed costs and all our variable costs. And I'm just going to end the video for now here, just so that each video doesn't get too long, and then continue this conversation about costs in the next video.